You're with News 5 tonight. Foreign Affairs and Law Minister K. Shan Mugam says it's unfortunate and regrettable that the family of American researcher Shane Todd has decided not to participate in a coroner's inquiry into his death. Todd was found hanged in his Chinatown apartment last June. Dr. Todd's body was found in his apartment and his parents believed he was murdered because of his work at the Singapore Institute of Microelectronics. Dr. Todd's family claimed that his death was related to a project between the Institute and Chinese telecoms giant Huawei Technologies. Singapore State Council, however, had presented evidence, among them that Dr. Todd had searched his laptop on different methods of committing suicide. A key dispute in the evidence between the State Council and the Todd family is the information in a hard drive found in Dr. Todd's apartment. Dr. Todd's family alleged that the Singapore police overlooked important information in the hard drive and accused the police of tampering with the device. It would have been useful to hear the family's side uh, as to how they came to a different view of the facts. It's unfortunate that if they don't take part, this particular assertion which formed a key part of the conspiracy theory, you know, can't be tested. Mr. Shamugam also pointed out that Dr. Todd's parents have met Mr. Lewis Montes, one of the state council's witnesses, and believed to be the last person to have seen Dr. Todd alive. The family had said that neither they nor Dr. Todd's girlfriend knew Mr. Montes. But Montes confirmed in his testimony today that he had actually met the parents at their hotel room along with some other close friends days after Dr. Todd was found dead. Again, this direct conflict of evidence could have been uh, better looked at if the family had chosen to come to court to give their testimony. The Todd family had also cast doubt on Singapore's judicial system. I think all of you have seen the proceedings, how they've proceeded. Nearly 60 witnesses' uh, statements have been taken. They've, many of them have been put through the process. Uh, lawyers have been given full uh, leave and liberty to deal with the witnesses. So I don't want to comment on the family's comments, except that last week they said that the proceedings were fair and they were happy with the process and happy with the judge and took part. And uh, all of this has come after their primary witness has withdrawn his statements. As to a possible movie deal, that's really not something I want to comment on. Mr. Shamugam also said the key points and evidence presented in court are public information available for all to see. The Financial Times, of course, may have a view. All I can hope is that they will rely on facts and not fiction when they continue the reporting. Mr. Shanmugam says the state is committed to presenting all the evidence, including the relevant information provided by the Todd family. He says the evidence will be thoroughly scrutinized and ultimately it will be left to the judge in the coroner's inquiry to come to a conclusion based on the facts and evidence. Well, the state coroner says he respects the Todd family's decision but that the inquiry must go on. The witness who triggered the walkout of American researcher Shane Todd's family yesterday took the stand this morning and said that he had met the Todd family when they came to Singapore last year. Mr. Luis Montes' evidence contradicted what the Todd family said on Tuesday that they did not know who he was and had never met him before. Yesterday, the Todd family left the courtroom midway during the hearing, claiming Mr. Montes was a surprise witness and they hadn't had enough time to prepare. In a statement, the family said they will not be participating in the rest of the inquiry and would turn to the court of public opinion. Lawyers acting for the Todd family were formally discharged this morning. Unfortunate that we are not able to proceed any further um, in order to bring forth the parents' position about the whole matter. Two U.S. forensic pathologists, Dr. David Fowler and Dr. Valerie Rao, also gave evidence as independent experts and dispelled theories by the Todd family's expert witness, Dr. Edward Edelstein, that Dr. Todd's death could have been caused by a taser or a neck chokehold. They said there was no medical evidence of this on Dr. Todd's body. Dr. Todd's ex-colleague, Joseph Romain Cubillo, who handed over an audio clip of a meeting among colleagues about the content of their police statements, also took the stand. He said he had been forced to attend the meeting. 
Last week, Dr. Todd's supervisor, Patrick Lowe, testified that the meeting had been called to advise them to be careful about disclosing confidential client information. Counsel for Singapore's Institute of Microelectronics, Philip J. Ratnam, then asked if Mr. Cubillo had jumped to conclusions that there was something sinister. Dr. Todd's aunt was the only family member who was present in court today, and she appeared to be taking notes throughout the day's hearing. Dr. Todd's brothers entered the courtroom this afternoon where they sat in the public gallery observing the proceedings. State coroner Che Yuan Fat asked if they would like to pose any questions to the witnesses and asked if transcripts of the proceedings could be made available to the family. The inquiry continues.